Next up, we have Mary Joy Sabal, Senior Integration Developer at Datacom. She's going to share with you how to use Maven archetypes to create MuleSoft API project templates. Joy, take it away. Thanks for that wonderful introduction and thanks for having me here, guys. I am Joy Sabal. I'm working as Senior Integration Developer at Datacom New Zealand. And today, I'm going to talk about using Maven archetypes to create a fancy MuleSoft API project template. So without further ado, let's get it started. So I have nine years of IT experience specializing in software integration and backend development. I started as a COBOL developer when I was 20 and fast forward after nine years, nine years I'm doing awesome things in integration space and currently in love with MuleSoft. So nine years of my life I spent in um, debugging and coding applications, which sounds fun. And um, at the moment, I'm currently producing uh, talented Mule developers and giving it back to the community. So that's why I'm here. For the agenda today, um, we're going to talk about what is life without having an API project template. And I'm going to present a sample use case for this and the content of an API project template generate a new and fancy Mule API project template, leverage any point exchange for API template versioning and documentation, what is Maven in MuleSoft, and in a later part, I'm gonna have a short demo of how we're gonna generate a MuleSoft API project template using Maven archetype. And lastly, the key takeaways for this presentation. All right, so use case. The scenario is a client is new in MuleSoft. So given that the developers needs to upscale because they are new in Mule. So the impact of that is it consumes a lot of time in training new developers for each line of businesses in reviewing the project structure, which is quite cumbersome. And to enforce the development standards and best practices would be quite overwhelming for a new developer. So to address that issue, we um, came up with the MuleSoft API project template using Maven archetype and leveraged the endpoint exchange to share it across all the developers. So a couple of benefits of this are to standardize the development um, practices and to speed up the development time and more of the uh, key takeaways later. So to summarize the technical challenges in building API structure is first it consumes a lot of development time, second it consistent project structures and lastly unable to meet development standards which is quite a big deal when the organization is still starting in MuleSoft. All right, so Maven. Before I talk about Maven archetype, what is Maven in MuleSoft? So Maven is a project management utility that Mule implements to enhance project development. All new projects created in Endpoint Studio 7 and later are configured Maven by default. And one of its plugins is Maven archetype. So Maven archetype, whose task is to create a project structure as per its template from which all other projects are created. So Maven provides a very large list of different types of project templates. So for this demo, we're gonna focus on the two, which are the create from project and the generate. So Maven archetype create from project. So first we got a POM file so POM is where we manage our dependencies. And then we're going to modify our archetype.metadata.xml. So this is Maven's um, archetype descriptor, which is the heart of the Maven archetype. And then the Maven archetype, just to give you a brief context, is uses the velocity templating engine, which means that you have a lot of control over what you could do. So I'm not going to go through all the details of what Velocity does, but the archetype.properties is where you define your um, Velocity 
attributes or placeholders and you could actually define your custom ones as well. So that's the command at the bottom to execute this um, archetype project. How does the Millsoft API project template ideally look like? So we've got this flow structure, resources structure, and then we've got the core dependencies and the core global configuration elements. So more of this later in the demo. Apart from that, we've got safely hidden properties for security purpose. And lastly, the configuring of log4j file for our logging to Cloud Hub. Next archetype is the generate. So from the generated Maven archetype that contains our custom project, we will generate a new Maven project for our new API. So more of this in the demo later. So that's the command and it will enter in interactive mode. And of course, any point exchange are one-stop shops, not only for connectors, but for the templates as well, which you could share across your organizations. So back to our use case, a new Mule developer could download the template from the exchange and yeah, you could, they could use it directly from their Endpoint Studio. Now, in the exciting part, which is the demo. So here's the short demo on how I created a MuleSoft API project from an archetype. All right, so for this demo, we're going to start by adding our published API template from Exchange to my Anypoint Studio. Awesome. First, let me discuss the file structure under source main mule folder. We have the domain interface wherein the domain would act as a placeholder to dynamically supply the project domain name. For example, customers interface, accounts interface. So this will be basically your flow starting point. Next is the domain implementation. Again, domain would act as a placeholder, which will be changed later when we run the Maven archetype command. Then common services from the name itself, this should contain the common flows or processes inside your project. Global configs, which of course would have the shared configuration files inside your API. And lastly, global error handler, wherein you would consolidate all your error handlers by referencing it inside the calling flow. Next is source main resources. First is the log4j2 configuration, which would have a couple of things. First is the auto-generated log file name based on your project name. This will get changed when we run the Maven archetype command. And on the other hand is the Cloud Hub log appender that pushes your logs to Cloud Hub. Other stuff inside the resources folders are the packages like DWLs, which should contain all the same data weave transformations as the WL file. Examples that could contain input or output payload. Schemas could be a WSTL or a JSON schema. And lastly, YAMLs, which we've got one file that is local config. So for example, here you could configure your Cloud Hub dedicated load balancer ports, and then feel free to add any common YAML files you would need on your API under this package. So that's pretty much for the source main resources. Next is the Mule Artifact JSON, wherein we have secure properties safely hidden or mask like Mule Key and Anypoint Platform Secret. So to verify this, you have to deploy your API to Runtime Manager and check the values under the Properties tab. And then POM file, 
since we published and downloaded this, this from Exchange, the group ID is my AnyPoint platform organization ID. Also in here, you can see that I've set up the core dependencies that weren't there by default, like the JSON schema validation, MUnit and MUnit tools, and secure configuration properties. So this will not be existing by default when you create a Mule project from scratch. So here you go. Those are basically the content of our Mule custom project. Now that we have got all we need to start our new API, we need to run the Maven archetype, create from a project command to create a template out of this custom project. So let's jump off a bit from our studio. So before we generate the command, you need to have the archetype properties inside the workspace where your API template has been set up. So inside this file, you can see that there are variables that we need to supply dynamically every time we will create a new Mule project. So make sure your archetype.properties is the same level as your API template project. If that's all good, we will step into our Mule API template, and we are now ready to run our first Maven archetype command, which is create from a project. So this command would actually um, generate contents inside the target folder, folder. So like the generated resources. So I'm gonna show you later on. Cool, so here, so this is what I was talking about. So this is the generate resources folder and we're after this file, which is the archetype metadata.xml that act as the archetype descriptor. So in here, we're gonna do a bit of tweaking in this file to include the empty packages under our source main resources because Maven by default doesn't include that. So we have to include that in Maven schema, which is this file. So we're just gonna copy this lines and chuck it in here and save it. So after saving it, we will navigate to archetype folder inside the target. So Okay, so the next command would be maven install. So this will upload our generated archetype in our local M2 repo. Cool. So now the archetype or the artifact has been uploaded in local M2 repo. So before we run our next Maven archetype command, let's first navigate back outside of our API template project directory. And at this point, we are ready to run our last Maven archetype generate command. So in this command, we will have basically the details that we saw from our POM file of the API template, like archetype group ID, version, etc. Apart from that, we have the domain in API description placeholders for our new Mule API project. So for API description, which most likely would contain spaces, take note that you need to wrap it with double quotes, otherwise you'll get an error. So it looks good now. 
So I'm going to run it. Awesome. So we're now entered the interactive mode. So for this stage, you should think about the setup of your new Mule API. So here, I'm just going to put a fake company and then my project name, which would be based from the domain. And then just the default snapshot and that's it. And if all looks good, then just hit Y. All right, awesome. So now, as you could see here, we've got a new project generated called Customer Sys API. So now we're in our new workspace. So we are ready to import the, um, the new Mule API project. Cool. So just import that and change the project name to customer sys API. So this is going to take a little bit of time because it's downloading the dependencies and stuff. Cool. So now, while it's still loading, let's verify the files. Okay. So the project name got changed from the domain as well as the implementation and the interface. And then in our log4j2, we've got the log file name change as well. And then in our POM XML, we've got the dependencies we need. Cool. So now that's our fancy newly generated API project from our API template. Yep, so that's for our demo. Now, what are the benefits of having an API project template? So we've got heaps of benefits. One is to standardize the project development. We've got a pre-configured dependencies, unified log4j format, and then we could safely hidden the properties, sensitive properties, and we could focus on implementing business requirements rather than spending time in building a project structure. And of course, we could speed up the development time because we don't need to spend more time building a project template. We could have that in less than 10 minutes. And lastly, enable developers to easily follow the best practices. Yep, so that's about my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in any of my channels and I'm happy to answer your questions. So that's a wrap for today's presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to drop it in the chat box. And by the way, guys, it's my birthday today. So show me some love in the chat box. And thank you so much again. And have a great day.